Everywhere. I'm Elaine, your host. I know you're going to be as excited as we are about this show. Right now, we're in San Jose, Costa Rica, and we're going to be taking this charter plane to our final destination. And this charter plane is one of Nature Airlines planes. And we always use Nature Air because they're one of the few airlines that have eco-friendly planes. Not to mention they're very colorful. And the pilots are the best, and since I know everyone, they let me fly the plane. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't really fly the plane. I just play a pilot on TV. Plus, I think the pilots and my crew were a little bit scared that I'd fly that plane better than they would. I like to familiarize myself with each plane's safety guide. They place it in the seat in front of you. It comes free with the flight and it's pretty good reading for a short plane ride. Hey, wait a second. I could have been an airline stewardess. Nah, I like being a TV host. This country is absolutely beautiful. But the view is even better from these large plane windows. Today we're going to be having fun with monkeys and a lot of them. Most of us think monkeys are really cool and guess what? They are. There are four primates that inhabit Costa Rica. Spider monkeys, howler monkeys, squirrel monkeys and white face monkeys. Also known as capuchin monkeys. To learn more about these monkeys we're going to have to hike for miles through the rainforest here in Costa Rica fun is. Whenever we're in Costa Rica, my good friend Danello helps us out with our travel because God knows I'll get us lost in the primary forest. Danello's the tour guide for the resort Crocodile Bay. Pura vida! Before we started our hike through the primary rainforest, we visited my friends Carol and Earl. They live on the side of the rainforest in a national park where they run a rescue center for animals. When we first got off the boat at the rescue center, I got the nicest greeting from a spider monkey named Sweet Pea. She was one of the friendliest monkeys I've encountered. And believe me, I've encountered a lot of monkeys. 20 minutes later, Sweet Pea lost her sweetness and became a royal pain in the rear. You know. Jumping all over my camera crew and stealing our equipment and climbing all the way up the trees. <laughs> I swear at one point she even stuck her tongue out at us. Although she was still the cutest pain in the rear, except for when she was chewing on her feet. Now that's disgusting. I swear Sweet Pea needed a pedicure because no respectful monkey would chew on their feet like that. I think monkeys are a lot like kids. They have to be the center of attention. But if anybody can handle them, Carol and Earl can. And we started out as the avian specialist, strictly an aviary uh, sanctuary. And about two and a half years ago, Manai called us and said they had a spider monkey they had confiscated and asked if we would take it. And that spider monkey was Poppy. We learned a lot about spider monkeys when Carol was introducing us to a rescued baby anteater. She look at her face. Oh, she is so is. sweet. Poppy, like most monkeys, is very playful and they'll play with just about anything, even a baby anteater. He's great. There he goes. Shortly after we put the little baby anteater on the ground, she found an ant nest. But out of nowhere, Poppy swings into action. Poppy, no. Even though Poppy keeps trying to mess with the baby anteater, it doesn't look like it bothers the anteater. He just keeps looking for ants. Sometimes I think we need to name her Poppy No. Because everybody oh, calls her Poppy No. <laughs> Poppy No. Yeah. The spider monkeys are the largest out of all four monkeys that inhabit Costa Rica. And they're bigger because they're longer arms and legs? Yes, look at that. Look at the legs. The spider monkeys aren't just unique because of their long arms and legs, they're also unique because of their missing thumbs. Unlike the other three monkeys, the spider monkey doesn't have an opposable thumb on their hands. Look, they only have four fingers on the hand. Now these are obviously good for climbing, right? And, and grasping, swinging. As they're brachiating, yes. Brachiating means they swing through the trees hand over hand. The spider monkeys are the only ones that brachiate because they're missing those opposable thumbs. Squirrel, howler, and capuchin monkeys all have those opposable thumbs like us. So they swing through the trees, but they don't brachiate like the spider monkeys do. 
So all four primates are great when it comes to swinging through the trees in the jungle. But what about the crew of animals everywhere? We found some Tarzan vines and we're going to put it to the test. Poppy may only have four fingers on her hands, but it doesn't stop her from stealing the bag of fruit out of my pocket. As you can see, the plastic bag's just slightly hanging out. Before you know it, she snatches it and runs. Oh no, you did not. She's no dummy. Honestly, do you think I'm going to get that bag of fruit back? I think not. Let's get back to Sweet Pea being a royal pain in the rear. This time she was jumping all over the exhibits that was being freshly painted. We all took turns trying to get her away from the paint. Carol definitely has patience. This is about the fourth time she's cleaned her off. I've always wanted a spider monkey, but after this shoot, I realized monkeys are not pets. Because of their long arms and their long legs, they can swing through the jungle at a fast pace. And they don't lose their grip because besides their hands and feet, they grab onto branches with their tails. <laughs> Howlers have prehensile tails, which mean they use it to grab onto things. Besides the howler, the spider and capuchin monkey have prehensile tails. They use them like we use our hands. The squirrel monkey doesn't have a prehensile tail, but they do use their tail for balance. Yes. Now, it, wow, look at this. This has got a pad underneath, Isn't just like the hands. Tough. Look at that. That's kind of cool. No print is the same. No print. It's like your thumb. Even print. on the tail, no yes. print is the same. Mm -hmm. The pad on their tail does have its own unique print, just like our thumbs. It also helps them grab onto branches and things. Those monkeys are really smart. I saw uh, a little uh, lady with a baby in the back and uh -huh. tried to cross tree by tree, and then the lady grabbed the branch with the tail on her branch, and the baby crossed, made like a bridge. They no cross. way, really? Mm -hmm. Danella was absolutely right. Monkeys are pretty smart. Sweet Pea's demonstrating her intelligence now. The world's history for dummies. See, Sweet Pea is pretty smart. Well, until she actually tried eating the book. I don't think we were supposed to show that part. Anyway, moving on. Don't go anywhere because we haven't learned all there is to learn about the Costa Rican primates. And when we come back, you're going to see Danello's map drawing skills. And we're going to be taking a horseback riding trip to the beach side of the primary rainforest. We'll be right back. Danello wants us to see where all four primates inhabit. The primary rainforest. Driving in Costa Rica is not always easy because the roads are kind of narrow. They're not paved and they get flooded quite a bit. But that's what happens in the rainforest. As we were driving, we ran into a troop of squirrel monkeys. They're so cute. Not only are they the smallest monkeys in Costa Rica, but they're the most peaceful and playful primates. We watched for a while as they jump from tree to tree across the road. Their tails help them leap from branch to branch like squirrels. That's how they got their name. Some of them even became curious of me and stopped to investigate. I was so amused by their looks because it looks like they're wearing a crown with white goggles. Unlike the capuchin monkeys, the squirrel monkeys have hair almost all over their face. These monkeys are active during the day and night. Everything about the squirrel monkey is small, except its brain. The size of a squirrel monkey's brain compared to its body size makes them have the biggest brain out of all four primates here in Costa Rica. So they should be pretty smart. They weigh around seven pounds, but unfortunately, predators can pick them off pretty easy because they are so light. Their predators are creatures like birds of prey and snakes. They live in very large groups, up to 300 individuals. Wow, that's a big family. Occasionally, they'll split off into smaller groups. Now, here's the best part. The females are the dominant ones in the troops. Yeah, look, look straight, straight there. The closer we got to the They're primary two, two rainforest, spots. we could hear howler right, right monkeys. There. Far away, but you see, it looks like a termite nest. But we couldn't see them very well, so Danello drew us a map of where we had to go to get to them. As you can see, we kind of ran out of paper, but Danello's map drawing skills weren't that bad. 
After Danello showed us our destination, we started heading towards the very loud howling. We've got a long hike ahead of us, so let's go. <laughs> Howler monkeys are well known for their lion-like roar. They can actually be heard from a mile away. Howler monkeys scare their unwanted guests away verbally with their loud, somewhat obnoxious howling. They sound ferocious, but they're not. The howlers make these loud sounds with two hollow bones in their neck. The males are the loud ones. That's how you can tell the males apart from the females, because the males have the really big fat necks, and the females' necks are proportionate to their small size. So you can see that like a big head is the male. <laughs> Other characteristic, but this is the. Uh, so the males have the big head. Hmm. Well, you Imagine can see it. Imagine that. <laughs> nice long hot hike we finally found them. I must say though standing underneath the trees as they were screaming back and forth was pretty scary. I know I was intimidated. Uh, what is the sense of screaming that uh, loud? The sound they made the sound with the marking territory or fighting or looking for enemies or fighting with the other howler monkey. The alpha male making loud sound in the morning early in the morning. Mm -hmm. At four in the morning you can hear very loud sound yeah. Uh, those are uh, monkeys uh, marking territory. I say to the other howler, this is my tree. And also they say, this is my family, this is my female, because they fighting for, for ladies. Oh, they do? Other monkeys, the other families try to steal the females. And then the alpha male is ready. They fighting. Unlike the spider monkey, the howler monkey doesn't normally physically fight, unless the younger howler monkey is trying to become alpha male. <laughs> Howler monkeys can be very intimidating with that lion-like howl, but they can also be pretty sweet. Howler monkeys kind of purr just like a cat. Um, regala, it's like a sign of affection. Um, regala will purr in my face when she's tired. Sable as well. Howler monkeys are often heard in the cloud forest, but very seldom seen. But you can see them in the rainforest. The howler monkeys like the cloud forest because it has high trees and deep foliage. Although they do spend some time in the rainforest with the spider, squirrel, and capuchin monkeys, they travel in families between 10 to 20 monkeys. They're also pretty healthy eaters. Now, do they eat any little critters or, or is it just strictly vegetarian? No, they're, vegetarian? they're vegetarians. Mm -hmm. Strictly veg? Yes. Okay. Strictly salads, huh, mm -hmm. little one? <laughs> Not regala. She loves eggs. Does she Here really? she eats eggs and, and pasta and rice and oh, puppy chowder. Oh, that's pasta. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's really healthy for him, yeah. you know? Italians would agree. <laughs> Howler monkeys are actually kind of lazy because of their diet. They just sleep around the top of the trees all day. What about their, like, their capability of going through the trees? Are they fast when they climb? Uh, no, they move really slow and uh, it moves like, like this. And uh, it's different than other species like a spider monkey, they singing, but howler monkey moves slow, it's really lazy monkey. And yeah. it spends a long time to sleep. So the they're, they're the laziest out of the four species? Yes. Uh, <laughs> they just sleep all day long? Well, it's mainly because of their diet. They okay. don't eat that much protein. Um, it's all leaves, so it's because of their diet that they're so, that they're so lazy. Uh, and they love taking the sun baths. If you see them, they're always sunbathing in the sun. And you wouldn't think that they would do it because they're so black, but it helps speed up their metabolism, digest their food, and give them energy as well. Right. Howler monkeys can actually reach up to 50 inches in length from the tip of their head to the tip of their tails. Is this a normal size for an adult age? Oh no, this is a younger. This is a yeah. really younger. The adult size is maybe a little bit small. A little bit bigger. Maybe, so, maybe so this little one here is probably about two thirds the, the size that they normally get. Yes. Howler monkeys weigh between 15 to 22 pounds. The spider, squirrel, and howler monkeys are pretty cool. But don't go anywhere because we still have to learn about the capuchin monkeys. We're also going to be going on a horseback riding trip through the villages to get to the beautiful beaches of Costa Rica. And you're going to be learning the secret of how my crew cools off after a long day's hike through the primary rainforest. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh. 
Yes, after a long day's hike through the primary rainforest, you need to cool off, especially when you're carrying a 30-pound camera the whole time. Wait. <laughs> Cameraman Peter's pretty creative. I wonder if any of the locals ever thought to use a flooded road to cool off with. How do you feel? Actually, a lot better than I did two minutes ago. <laughs> Cameraman Peter didn't feel better when I told him that we had to head back into the rainforest to shoot more footage. We have to find those capuchin monkeys. Danello thinks he knows where they are, so back into the rainforest we go. Now there's a mm -hmm. lot of bugs in the rainforest, like this big spider and this cool looking walking it's stick. But the ones that stand out in my mind are the ants that bite and they feel like you just got stung by a hornet. I remember them very well because of my open toed sandals. Besides the cool bugs, they also have some really cool plant life and tree life in the rainforest. Costa Rica is 25% primary forest, which means it hasn't been touched. So you'd be able to see trees like this behind me, which is probably around 500 years old. But capuchin monkeys wouldn't be in a tree this big. Let's go see if we can find some monkeys. Sure. The white-faced monkeys can be found almost anywhere in Costa Rica. And those white monkeys uh, like the secondary forest. Uh -huh. Living in the primary forest too, but uh, they, they like the low trees, the small trees. Once again, Danella was right because luckily we found them eating and laying around in some low-lying trees at the edge of the rainforest. They were so busy eating, they didn't even seem to care that we were there. Hanging in the tree in that position can't be comfortable. White-faced monkeys are considered to be omnivorous, which is kind of like college students. They'll pretty much eat anything they get their hands on. They're looking for insects. They eat also vegetables, but, uh, but they're looking for bugs. Oh, they like the bugs. I saw they eat snakes, lizards, eggs, birds, and also vegetables. I heard snakes actually taste good, but lizards, yuck. So they're not vegetarians like the other three monkeys here in Costa Rica. The white-faced monkeys are a lot smaller than the other three. You can see the difference in size between the spider monkey and the white face monkey. The spider monkey is, is a lot bigger. They're so cute. Most people recognize these monkeys as the monkeys that used to play the organs for money. Look at the face, looks like an old man. The white face monkey does look like a little old man, and sometimes they can even be as grumpy as a little old man. I found this out when I was trying to feed them. Now as you can see, this little monkey really wanted to take the food from me, but he was debating if he should bite me first. Luckily, he thought the fruit was tastier. Good boy. They're so cute. Now, do they have like fangs? They look like they have like they have fangs, fang. like they, a cat. Like yes. fangs, you, like you a you cat. See, see, when they open their mouth, you can see the, the big fangs. And the capuchin monkey's fangs aren't small, so it's a good thing that wild one didn't bite me. The white-faced monkeys are diurnal, which means they're active during the day. <laughs> now, these two are so funny because they're really fresh to each other. Think of they're just like smacking each other. Capuchin monkeys, like most monkeys, are very social. They spend a lot of time grooming each other. Yeah. And they also spend yeah. a lot of time wrestling. White-faced monkeys can actually live to be about 40 years old. These monkeys have a lot in common with the elephant. And they can actually be beneficial to its habitat. They eat a lot of fruit, and they don't digest most of the seeds that are in the fruit. So the seeds are spread through their droppings. I guess you can consider them gardeners. Their hands are, are so human. Look at him. He just looks like a little person. 
All four primates here in Costa Rica have their own little funny ways about them. One of the funniest things was watching Sweet Pea's reaction when I blew in her mouth. Yeah, that's something. It's just something she doesn't really feel. She'd never feel in the wild, so it feels good to her. <laughs> now that's funny. Before we ended our trip, Danella wanted us to experience a horseback ride on the beautiful beaches here in Costa Rica. But instead of riding horses on the beach, Danello had another idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to be riding that on the beach. I think I'll stick with horses. After I explained to Danello that it wasn't the best idea he's had, he rounded up some horses and we started off through the village towards the beach. I know you all think cameraman Peter's horse looks a little small for him. Don't feel bad, I laugh too. It's a long story, but Peter was actually supposed to have a horse and not a pony. So he's being a good sport. I guess we'll give him a break and not laugh too hard. As we rode around the village, we saw some pretty silly looking cows. Look at the ears on them. I bet you they can hear from a mile away. When we hit the beaches, it actually took my breath away. Well, that's it for our show today, but don't be disappointed because we'll be going on another adventure real soon. We hope you've enjoyed Costa Rica and all the animals here. At this time, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Till next time, there might be an animal that's your favorite. If you have any questions or comments about the show, write to Elaine at Animals Everywhere, P.O. Box 584, South Glastonbury, Connecticut, 06073. Or visit our website, animalseverywhere.com, where you can contact Elaine by email.